um say a brief history of the the fork and and what what the the two different sides were were arguing for or trying to get so when it comes to two different sides first of all i want to, I want to say that I'm, I'm very much a bsv advocate and bsv is is actually a split from the bitcoin cash civil war so i would argue that bsv is both the real bitcoin and the real bitcoin cash but that's a again a nuanced conversation here uh, going back to at least as far back as 2013, there was a discussion on the best way to scale Bitcoin uh, that falls into two very distinct sides. The, the first side, uh, BTC says that we should never change the block size limit and we should only tinker in the software uh, and make blocks more efficient. And then we should make very fundamental protocol changes to allow transactions to occur in other channels, uh, Lightning Network being one of them, uh, but Liquid being another. And there's been propositions of, of other things, like let's build a separate network that allows Bitcoins to transact. I, I think another one right now is very clearly Ethereum. There's more BTC on Ethereum than there is on Lightning Network because that's just what people want to do with it. And yeah, think about that. It's a weird one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> could you could you explain so, how how the fuck that that works? So briefly? it's 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 not even on Ethereum. It is tokenized. So let's say you want to play with one BTC in an Ethereum DeFi contract, and me and you are going to act as custodians. We put that one BTC into a smart contract where we both have the keys. We both have to sign to move it, and then we issue an Ethereum token that is worth one BTC. And we promise to redeem it in the future. It's like what they're doing at Tether. It's mm -hmm. here's your dollar here. Here's a one-to-one -one Tether that represents a dollar. So, so that's what's going on with BTC. And because you cannot do uh, smart contracts and all this different stuff on BTC, it makes sense to lock that BTC up and transact it on whatever network that you want to do something with it on. Um, that's funny because uh, smart contracts were first deployed in Bitcoin, uh, the original Bitcoin protocol allowed for tokenization, NFTs, you could build all kinds of stuff up in the stack. This was all shut off uh, really, really early, actually. This is between uh, 2010 and 2013. They shut a bunch of this stuff off. They added a bunch of different things. They started to tinker with the protocol the second Satoshi was no longer in the picture. And this pissed off the people that knew Satoshi. Like there were developers who had personal relationships with him. And so this is what guys like uh, Mike Hearn and Gavin Andreessen and Jeff Garzik and, and some of these other early guys. And when the sophomore class of developers showed up, these are like Peter Todd, Greg Maxwell, uh, Peter Willey, um, various others. Um, they were like, well, no, Satoshi didn't know everything. He wasn't right about everything. We need, we're the software experts. We're going to fix Bitcoin. Well, they were the Bitcoin originalist types that said, no, Satoshi was very clear that the protocol is set in stone at version 0.1. Like he was, he was not ambiguous about uh, Bitcoin being able to scale on chain. You just allow miners to accept larger blocks should they decide to, and then we go forward from there. Well, this turned into an extremely toxic uh, civil war. Every proposition of, hey, here's, let's do a client that can mine two megabyte blocks. They were DDoS, they were harassed, they had their keys revoked, they were kicked out of the conversations in the Linux Foundation, they had their keys revoked from GitHub. It was like, if you suggest larger blocks, you are gone. You're not a Bitcoiner, get out. And lots of people left literally under threat in, in many circumstances. Like, hey, my family is at risk at this point and I'm not even getting paid. I'm a volunteer. I was friends with Satoshi. But if it means somebody, you know, DDoSing me off the network and me losing my real job and, you know, maybe my family being physically harmed, peace out. Good luck. You guys suck. And so there was there was a lot of that for a while too. And then it, it culminated ultimately into the honest nodes of the network, the, the mining nodes saying, okay, we're going to split the ledger and we are going to try a two chain solution. This is BTC and BCH, Bitcoin Cash. Um, things did not go the way that they were expected. And the reason is, is ultimately they didn't really try the Bitcoin protocol properly reinstated in Bitcoin Cash either. And Bitcoin Cash had a bunch of people that were also small blockers. And so uh, myself, uh, I was vaguely supportive of Bitcoin Cash. I, did, I didn't 
love the idea. I would have fought forever for the BTC ticker and, and all of that. I, I think the fight was worth it. But then ultimately, um, you know, I was a small voice among big ones mm. and uh, Bitcoin Cash was split. And I said, OK, well, that's the version I support. Like it is the 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 roadmap toward restoring Satoshi's vision of Bitcoin, which frankly, we have not tried between 20, 2010 and 2017. We didn't try Bitcoin as Satoshi envisioned it. And if we believe Satoshi had any value at all, isn't it worth trying his idea? <laughs> and uh then by 2018, about a year later, we were all fighting again in the Bitcoin Cash community because a certain number of them said, eh, we don't really need to raise the block size limit. And uh, th those of us who became the BSV community, we, we were saying, all right, well, the original Bitcoin didn't have a block size limit. It didn't have all these script limitations. It didn't have all these things. We want to restore the protocol and let every single conversation not be about what software developers want, but we want everything to be based on policy settings of the node operators. So a node operator can attempt to mine a four gigabyte block or a 10 terabyte block or, or allow for all kinds of data, whatever they want. But, but we fundamentally believed that the market of the, the nodes of the network should decide everything based on competitive consensus. BTC doesn't allow you to do that. BTC demands that you run very, very tightly managed, like consensus level settings in a node that is in in um, run in consensus with Bitcoin Core, the, the the reference client, and and that reference client does not allow you to to move any direction. It is a very tight and narrow lane that they they force you to go down. So. Uh, that's the very short version of uh, why there is a BTC, a BCH, and a BSV uh, on the SHA-256 algorithm. Uh, I think people should be aware that the miners, the mining pools that you hear of, the big names, the, your ant pool, your F2 pool via BTC, um, Mining Dutch, BTC Top, uh, all of these pools, they mine all three chains. So the, the, the deciding nodes have said, we want them to compete. We're going to allow a multi-chain consensus experiment that don't innately orphan one another. So I would argue that all three are Bitcoin out of consensus. We have not had the war that orphans everything that isn't truly Bitcoin yet. And when that happens, it's going to be some fireworks. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, so there's a, there's a few things I want to, I want to try and like get a few more details on here and get, get a better understanding of, uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to this amazing comment that someone said, um, Don Friedrichsen, he said, maybe a spicy comment, but BSV is like the anti-jab movement, not recognized, actually demonized by the majority, but we look at data and results, not fakeable charts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, which, uh, yeah. Hilarious, man. Uh, thanks for the comment. Um, so. Uh, essentially, what you're saying is that the the initial civil war was about, uh, in a nutshell, it was about the block size. Then the Bitcoin Cash people split off, and then there were some people who thought that there should be um, like a limit on the on the block size. Is that so? BSV is the only implementation of the Bitcoin protocol that does not have a software level block size limit. So okay. Bitcoin Cash will only let you do 32 megabytes every 10 minutes is, is the total amount of transactions or whatever. And on BTC, it's somewhere between one and four, depending on how much uh, SegWit usage there is, but it's typically right around one megabyte per block. So th those are very, those are hard coded limits. And if you try to push that limit, you will immediately be hard forked off the network. Like you are not allowed to compete beyond what the software developers uh, determine. Uh, but in BSV, um, you, you can you can try to do whatever you want. Miners can say, eh, like you need to pay a higher fee or or you need to wait or whatever. But if, if you want to send a, a 50 terabyte transaction, that's just this gigantic smart contract, you can do it. It won't fork. It might sit in somebody's mempool for an hour or a day or a week. But when some miner decides to mine it, like, okay, we'll push it. And you can push an entire operating system into the stack on BSV, for example. But um, it's just, it's, it's a much more free market competitive system, like in its own closed loop. It allows you to basically try to do anything. Okay. So the, the question that 
because I, I kind of get it. This is what this is what I was saying before. Like I've spoken to quite a few people in this space, and like I'm mm. really trying to get like a good grasp of of all the fundamentals of it. So, why is the block size? so crucial like what is what is so fundamental about that that people fought so viciously by the signs of things about it sure so i mean that's a, that's a it's a big question unfortunately it sounds like it should be simple but <laughs> um it, it's it's a lot of things for for one it's governance so the way that bitcoin is governed uh is is according to section five of the bitcoin white paper it explains that a node validates a block by building another block and and securing it with proof of work and you that, that that's how every change should be made any kind of policy should be about like you know what i'm an honest node i have a lot of proof of work i'm willing to to validate this block by building on it that's that's the entire governance model in bitcoin the btc people have said no, there's also a social consensus aspect to things. Like you don't necessarily have to be a block building node in order to have an opinion about network consensus. So they created like the the Bitcoin improvement proposal system they call BIPs today. So uh, like Taproot has a certain BIP number and is going to be implemented because of a a specific flag day vote. So it's it's democratic in that way, right? So you have this sort of social group of do I want Taproot? Do I not want Taproot? And it's it's like a yes or no. And everybody signals with their nodes, even though those nodes are not providing proof of work. And then they agree to accept taproot transactions after a certain date, uh, a flag date. So they're basically, they're having what's essentially an election in Bitcoin, but they're changing the governance model. Like there is nowhere in the, the white paper or the protocol spec of, you know, if you read the way that it's governed uh, from a software standpoint originally. So all this stuff is like, it might be a good thing. Maybe taproot is a good idea but it undermines the governance and the rules of the network. And if Bitcoin is not governed by the rules by which it's established, you have to ask, well, who has the authority to change the governance model of Bitcoin? And the response from people is, well, everyone, if we all collectively agree to change Bitcoin, it's like, okay, that's fine. But a democratic money is not a hard money. It is not sound money. If, if you can vote to change the fundamentals of the money, is that not fiat currency? Is, is this not the problem that we have now is that there is a group of people that can change the rules of the money, right? Mm. And so so that's that's sort of the philosophical underpinnings of it. Um, and so for big blockers, we looked at it and said, Satoshi gave us a fixed protocol secured by proof of work. And if we want to be able to scale Bitcoin, there, there has to be more transactions per block. And if you have a hard coded one megabyte limit, you can only do about seven transactions per second at the very best. So that's BTC's max limit is you can't get more than seven, seven per second or about six megabytes per hour can go across that network. That's the hard limit. And that isn't nearly enough for 7 billion people to use Bitcoin, right? So it demands that you have to use other systems, other network resources, you know, either like a visa secured by Coinbase and, you know, all this custodial crap. And that, that really undermines what Bitcoin was supposed to do. But with a bigger block size, maybe maybe there's only 100 users right now. And so you only need a kilobyte sized block. But then on Black Friday, there's going to be a lot more people using it, assuming we're using it as a global cash. Right. Mm. And so maybe on Black Friday, you need to have successive terabyte blocks go by in order to, to maintain the governance and, and the rules of the system. So Lightning Network or, or any other off-chain solution is essentially, it's a different, it's a separate network entity with separate network rules. And people would argue, well, if you're only transacting in pennies or whatever, it doesn't matter. But I would argue every Satoshi matters. Every Satoshi matters very much. And saying that some Satoshis should be allowed to be used in a different rule set tells me that you don't understand just how important the rules of a sound and hard money are. And so in order for, for Bitcoin to let every Satoshi be governed the way that a Bitcoin is supposed to be governed, for us to trust it to be sound money and hard money, we have to be able to submit every single transaction that occurs to the proof of work of honest nodes. Otherwise, we're not talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very specific. It's very particular. 
And, you know, and, and this is why we have civil wars, right? It's, it's exactly the same thing. Like, uh, you know, like think Israel and Palestine, like both, both sides really care about doing the right thing with their property rights and, and their religious heritage and, and all these things. And there are good people on both sides of that that say, hey, my family's from here 10,000 years ago. And there's somebody on the other side that says, yeah, and my family's from here 10,000 years ago too. <laughs> and, but we disagree and we disagree on these very fundamental things. And it, it comes down to, can we establish truth, real truth? And with, with certain things like that, it's, it's a philosophical discussion. But I would argue that Satoshi's writings, which are publicly available, uh, the Bitcoin white paper is publicly available. And if you break it down and say that Bitcoin is, is, a, is a rule, it is a set of rules that give us a hard money, that, that it, it matters to make sure every Satoshi is governed by that rule set or else it's all up for grabs. If, if anything's up for grabs, it's all up for grabs. And, and that's, that's really my position on it. And it is the big block Bitcoin position on it is that Bitcoin is fundamentally good and it, it should fundamentally be kept all in one rule set. And, and that's, that's the, that's. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's, um, the, the one thing I love, I love your every Satoshi matters. That's amazing. <laughs> you should get that on a t-shirt, man. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment for us in the comments below. Let me know what you thought and if you'd like to see more of this from the show. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.